Hey there, dirt bike people. I'm Chuck from TrueTech, and today I'm gonna to be deleting the oil system on this 2019 300 TPI. So first things first, if you have a stock TPI, you cannot delete the oil system. You need to stick with the stock injection system. I'm going to be installing a TSP power kit with a high compression head. This is a snow bike. I'm gonna be reflashing the ECU, and I'm also going to be doing the injector relocation kit, which is the key. You need to relocate the injectors in order to have a safe, premix situation setup. TSP is not the only company that offers an injector relocation kit. There's lots of them out there. I personally think that the TSP is far superior to the other ones, so I'm gonna be putting it on this. But in order to do premix, you need to move the injectors from the transfer ports into the intake. Now I'm making a long list of changes to this TPI, so you'll see that I already have the cylinder off, I have the throttle body off, and in order to remove the oil system, including the oil tank, you need to remove the throttle body. You don't need to remove the top end. I just have that there anyway, and it increases visibility a bit for you, but you do need to remove the throttle body. So in 2020, KTM made a number of small changes to the oil tank and the surrounding area. They added an ambient pressure sensor, and they changed the way that the oil pump mounts a little bit. So I'm gonna show you both the 18 and 19 models, and then also the 20 and newer models. Now, first of all, why would you even want to go to premix instead of the oil injection? Well, there's a bunch of different reasons. A lot of people believe that the oiling is inadequate with the oil injection. I'm, I think that there's a certain amount of truth to that, but it's pretty minimal. I've been very happy with the oil injection system on my bike, as well as all of the bikes that I've worked on for customers. I have not seen an engine failure due to the oil injection system as long as the oil injection system is working as it's supposed to. The reason why I like the idea of premix is because it removes a lot of the variables associated with having a good running oil injection system. So I'll show you a couple of the components that I think are prone to failure first of all. So potential failure number one, oil pump plug. This oil pump plug, although it is quite tight and it's quite unlikely that it will fail, it can possibly either come off or one of the wires could fail. Now, if that happens, your check engine light is gonna come on and it should alert you to that failure. But we all know that it's very easy to miss a check engine light when we're riding. So that's one potential failure point right there. Number two, this is the low oil level sensor. And what we're gonna do when we remove this oil tank is simply unplug this and close it up. There's no resistor required or anything. What that means is that if this plug comes undone or if the oil level sensor fails and you run out of oil, the check engine light is not gonna come on or the low oil light um, and you're not gonna know that this is empty. Really how it should be is if this comes unplugged, there should be a warning light that comes on. Instead of it being a fail safe system, it's simply if the oil level drops below a certain point, the low oil light comes on and that alerts you. So if this comes undone, you don't have a low oil light. Third potential problem, this connector right here. Oftentimes I've seen while I'm doing a top end or routine maintenance that it's almost come off. I haven't actually seen one come off completely, but while I was deleting a previous oil system, I basically, I just touched it and it fell off. Now, an important note here, this is a 2019 and in 2020, the way that this is mounted changed a little bit and they went to a 90 degree fitting and the 90 degree fitting is far worse. The 2019 is far less prone to this fitting coming off, but the 2020 and newer models have a 90 degree fitting and that is much more prone to leakage and much more prone to failure. This thing, oftentimes on the bikes that I'm working on is about to fall off. It's, that's a huge potential failure point there. Now, as long as your low oil level sensor is working, you'll get notified. But if this is unplugged or there's a break in the wire or the sensor has stopped working for some reason and this little hose comes undone, you are quickly on the road to a seized engine. So those are just three of the potential failure points. Of course, the pump could fail or the ECU could stop sending the signal or a wire could break. There's all kinds of different reasons why the oil system could fail. That being said, 
they are extremely reliable. I've seen almost no problems with the oil system whatsoever. Of course, there are some other reasons why you may want to delete your oil system. I'm not going to get into all of those and arguing about whether the oil system is adequate or not, or effective or not, main bearing life, piston seizure, all that stuff, warming up the bike. There, there's lots to talk about on those topics, and uh, I certainly have an opinion, um, but this is not the video for that. Whatever the case, I'm going to go ahead and delete the oil system on this bike, and I'll show you how to do it. So at this point, I've unplugged the oil pump right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is remove the oil pump and drain the oil out of the tank. Now, this is a little bit different on the 2020 and newer models. On the 19, I'm gonna take this bolt off and remove the oil pump first, and then quickly drain the tank. On 2020 and newer models, I remove the little elbow piece from the pump and I drain the tank first, and then I remove the pump, and that has to do with the way that the tray is mounted. So here you can see the 20 and newer model. I like to loosen that bolt, but not take it out all the way in order to pinch off this tube so that I can drain the oil that's in the tank. So on this 19, I'm just gonna go in here and remove this oil pump mounting bolt. Now I have a special little hose that I use for this with this 90 degree kick on the end. And I'm just gonna come in here and pop that hose off of the input side of the pump. But oftentimes what I do is I just have, have my fingers in here so that I can squeeze it. So I'm just gonna squeeze that hose. I'm gonna get my 90 degree thing in here, put it on there. And now what I'm gonna do is open up the oil tank cap and it's gonna start to pour out of there. So while that's draining, we're gonna get at this oil level sensor plug here, and it's a super weird one. So you take this little red piece and lift it up so that it comes out, and that's like a locking mechanism. And then this, lift it up, and then that comes undone. So I like to put one piece of heat shrink on, and then shrink it, and then clamp it with a set of pliers like this. And that way I can fold it over and put another piece on top to hold it all in place. That seals it up really nicely. So at this point, we're going to unplug a couple of the components that are integrated into the tray. That's this black piece here. So this is the tip sensor, and that is another one of the differences between the 19 and the 20 and newer models. On the newer models, the tip sensor or rollover sensor or angle sensor, it's mounted back in the airbox underneath the battery. But on the 19 models, it's mounted right here. So we're gonna have to relocate that a little bit later on. Then crankcase pressure sensor. Now we can remove the tray itself from the oil tank. Now this is a bit of a difficult thing. There's another bolt back behind there. So I'm gonna use my ratchet wrench and just get that bolt out, not a big deal. And you'll find another mounting bolt over here. So this tray is loose now and it can just come right out with the crankcase pressure sensor there. So this is what the 2020 and newer models look like. Instead of the tray being mounted to the side of the tank, it's mounted to the bottom of the oil tank with these three screws. So after removing the oil pump, you just take these three screws out and the tray along with the crankcase pressure sensor and ambient sensor comes off easily. So now we've got two bolts to remove to get the oil tank off. And this is the rear one right here. And the second one is up here. It's kind of hidden behind one of these wires, that main starter wire there. Okay, so now the tank is completely loose and the only thing left to deal with is this Oedeker clamp right here. So I'm just gonna go in with a screwdriver and oftentimes you can, yep, just pop that clamp apart and then the whole oil tank just comes out. There we have it. I'm just gonna try to just, yeah, there we go. We'll just reef it out. So you can see this little hook keeps this whole assembly in there. And then from there, just yank it out. 
So now we're going to remove the sensor from the tray. Because what we got to do is cut up this tray and then mount the sensor back pretty much the same location it was stock. So be careful because the little nipple on the end of the sensor is very sensitive and it's very easy to break it. I've broken several of them there. They break off right here. Sure. I'm going to mount this sensor back in there and I'm going to use a little bit of 5910. So I'm just doing that because this is a plastic tray and these things, these sensors are known for leaking. So we're just going to give it a bit of extra protection against leaking from water or from dust or anything like that. You got to make sure not to obstruct this hole at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a couple of holes in this tray so that I can mount it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the hose. And actually you didn't see me take off the hose because I'd already removed the cylinder. But if you're working on your TPI, you probably know where this hose is. Now I'm going to put a little bit of silicone around here too. Again, you don't want to obstruct that orifice at all. So I'm going to take this hose. I don't have any, any silicone near the end of the orifice, see? So I'm going to get it into the silicone a bit and I'm going to spin it so that it distributes it evenly. There. So I want the seal to be on this vertical surface between the tray and the hose. All right, so I've just mounted a jug on here for demonstration purposes. I'm not actually going to keep this jug on there. Basically, I would do the same thing here with this little, the little bung on the cylinder. Put a little bit of silicone on there. Like I say, this, this jug doesn't even belong to this bike. But now I'm going to mount this sensor right here. And what you want to do is keep this hose as close to the stock orientation as possible. So you want to angle it up a little ways so that if fuel gets into here, which it will, it'll drain back out. Now I'm going to put an extra zip tie right here around that clutch cable. Be sure to mount that back in its place. I'm going to remove the cylinder, but you get the idea. And an added bonus is if the crankcase pressure sensor fails on the trail, this is very easy to change as opposed to the stock location. Now for the tip sensor, this one is really simple. Basically, it just slides onto those two poles. There we go, I've just cleaned that up a little bit. I'm gonna be mounting it like this, facing up. So that just goes back on there and then we'll mount it on the bike. So I've got a bunch of these clip nuts that I keep on hand for occasions just like this. Now, this sensor it's free to wiggle up and down like this, the way that I have it mounted, but I'm just going to fix that with a, with a little zip tie. This sensor isn't super picky, but you do want to make sure that it remains oriented with the upside up. I'm just going to zip tie it up in that position there, and that should be just fine. So as I mentioned, this is a 2019 model, so it doesn't have an ambient pressure sensor, but I want to show you guys how to mount that. So I'll show you on a 21 model that I did just a little while ago. So after removing this oil tank, we now have a bunch of little mounting holes up here. And that's what I'm going to use in order to mount the ambient pressure sensor. So I'm just using a little riv nut tool. If you don't have a riv nut tool, you can use a clip nut or you can use just a regular bolt and a nut. You could even just use a zip tie. So you don't have to make yours as complicated as this, or you can make it more complicated, but I machined a little collar to go into this rubber bushing. It is important that this ambient pressure sensor gets mounted upright so that any contaminants that get in that little rubber boot can drain out. So you don't want to be mounting it sideways or upside down, but I just mounted this riv nut in here just like I did the other one. And the little collar that I 
put in there keeps the rubber from collapsing. And then I'm just gonna mount it right up in here. And we can plug in the ambient sensor and we're done. So now that our oil pump is no longer with us, another thing we gotta do is cap off this little bung. And that little cap conveniently comes in the TSP oil system delete kit. And the last thing is the oil pump plug terminal. So here we've got the oil pump plug and we're just gonna plug this resistor in and that way the ECU thinks that it has an oil pump in place when it actually doesn't. We'll just zip tie this out of the way and then that'll prevent us from getting a check engine light on. So as I've already mentioned, what I wanna reiterate before you delete the oil injection system, you need to relocate at least one of your injectors. There are a whole bunch of different products on the market that will allow you to do that. I definitely recommend the TSP one because I think it's the complete package. It relocates the injectors, the ECU mapping, changes the phasing of the injectors so that it eliminates fuel pooling. That injector phasing also ensures that adequate fuel and oil are in the bottom end for long enough to lubricate all the parts. As I said, this is a 2019 model. The 20 and newer models differ slightly, but the concept remains the same. Hopefully this video was useful to you. Thanks for watching.